What is best in life? Crushing your enemies and driving them before you and hearing the lamentation of their women. Yes, Conan is in the house and this is the King's Pledge. So as you can see, I've got the main box as well as the Kickstarter exclusive box. And it's lovely that they've done two nice deluxe boxes to fit your game in. Now, if you're wondering if I quoted Conan correctly, well, maybe I didn't because of course Conan was actually quoting Genghis Khan. But enough of that. Let us have a look inside the box. Okay, so once you've opened up the box, you'll be presented with a, a, a few options. Now, it depends on which version of the game you bought, the retail or the Kickstarter version, as to exactly the content. So I'm going to try and limit myself to talking about the retail contents and skipping over the Kickstarter exclusives. But well, you're going to get your character cards, obviously Conan and his friends. You're going to get some ability cards, and you're also going to get a turn tracker. Now, if you've got a Kickstarter version, you might get some extra characters. I'm not going to talk about them. So you've got Conan. He's your typical warrior who's good at kicking people's teeth in. You've got this wizardy character here, um, Hadrathus. He casts some mean spells. He's not as good as Conan, but he's not bad. You've then got Shavatus, who I believe is quite good at moving around and manipulating boxes. Uh, he's not really like combat. And then, yes, the first controversial figure, Bellet, who seems to have forgotten to put her clothes on. Now, I think she's a sort of strong, seductive figure that you can imagine Conan would fall for. Some people have said it's not so much she owns her sexuality, but she's, it's been forced on her. It depends on which side of the fence you fall on that. I, I don't want to go near that with a barge pole. But yes, controversial artwork within this game and uh, that also includes the cover of the rule book. Now she's very good at uh, manipulating so she's got five gems so she's good at opening chests and um, locked doors and things like that. So there are your kind of four basic heroes in the box and the way the game works is each hero has some stats. Basically you have a dice pool mechanic whereby you get a set amount of dice. Conan, for example, has 11. The gems, as they are, uh, go in this little green box here. And when you want to do an activity, you take a gem out of here and pop it on one of these six activities up here. In addition, they have some skills and they also have an encumbrance rating, so how much equipment they can carry. And this number is when a particular skill gets lost. So if you have seven items in weight on you, You'll lose your ability to swim, but you can still leap and climb and smash through walls and cleave people. And you'll notice the cleave people uh, stays forever. Uh, as you get more encumbrance, it also affects your movement. So the, basically the game works by taking the gems here and, for example, doing a melee attack. Now Conan's very good at melee. He gets to roll a red dice and he can allocate up to five gems for this particular activity. He's decent at ranged attacks, getting a orange dice and can do that up to four gems fairly good on defense got orange dice there has a basic movement of two and you can add an extra four movement points to him he's okay at manipulating things not brilliant he can do that up to three times with an orange dice and he can re-roll infinitely so you've got this tension in the game as to how many gems you take out of your active zone and put on these abilities up the top here and when you're done at the end of your turn, all the gems are up here, come down to your kind of recovery box, and then they're out of use for a turn. And then on the next turn, they move from here across to here um, based on these numbers up here. And as you can see, there are two sets of numbers. You get two tokens back each turn if you're active, which means you can do all six activities or you can become passive which means you can only do these end two but you're going to get five gems back so you've got this delicious tension of taking gems from your pool and using them to like say put five dice into the giant snake and kill it but you're only going to get two of them back next turn and that means you're only going to have let's say eight gems to work with next turn and, and maybe you need to move and smash someone else Alternatively, you could just put one dice in here, maybe do a re-roll, and save a load of dice to defend. That's the choice you've got to make. Or maybe you just go all in and then have a turn where you basically don't do anything, just recover your, die, your, your, your gems. Now, of course, what happens if you get wounded? How do you track that? Well, your gem pool effectively is your life, so Conan can take 11 damage before he dies. And the way that works is the gems come off 
from your skills or abilities, I should say, from your abilities and your exhausted pile into this dead pile on the end. And you never get those back uh, unless you've got some magical healing. What happens if all your gems from your exhausted pile and your um, ability piles are depleted? Well, then you have to take it from your active pool and eventually, obviously, you, you drop down dead. So there is a bit of player elimination, although for the heroes to all be wiped out, you, you do need to be trying pretty hard. Now, from that basis, I think Conan works really well as a two-player game where one player is the the protagonist, the um, the heroes, and then uh, another player plays the part of the overlord, the ones playing the villains and, and the baddies in the stories. Um, you could play with three players, where one player is Conan, because he's a real beat stick, and then the other players are the other characters. That's up to you. Um, but there you go. So I've now basically taught you everything you need to know about the rule book. so let's reveal the controversial cover with the partially clad helpless princessy type character being rescued by Conan in all his muscly two-weapon wielding glory. Now the rule books have been very maligned. You actually get two. You get the hero's book which you need to read fully to play the part of the overlord in theory because a lot of rules in the overlord refer you to the hero's book. Unfortunately I think there might even be some rules in the hero's books that refer you to the overlord and within the books they refer to pages all over the place. So yeah the, the books have been criticised as not very good and yes they, they, they aren't very good I'm afraid but they are perfectly serviceable rules to play the game and the rule system is simple enough that you know, once you've skimmed through the rules, that you're pretty good. There are a couple of little loopholes and some examples that could be better and some translation issues, yes. But yeah, the, the rule books are not as bad as people are making out. Uh, I am pleased they are doing a second print run, hopefully, though, to correct some of the errors and clean things up a bit. Because really, all the rules that are in this book should be in this book. And then this should purely be scenarios and special things that are purely for the overlord only. Um, one of the biggest criticisms I have is the confusing use of terminology. For example, you have a unit card that controls units, and what they mean by units are figures. So surely it would have been better to refer to unit cards controlled in figures, and then you activate a unit as a whole, but then each individual figure within that unit acts on its own. So that's a little bit confusing terminology there. Anyway, what am I talking about? Well, you're going to need to see more of this box for that to become clear. So in the box, uh, I have quickly taken it out to check it and then just quickly popped it back in the box. Um, your box might vary from mine. This is Kickstarter exclusive, I believe, the lion and the tentacle beastie, but you will get the snake. Um, you will also get some nice equipment cards. As you can see, I haven't opened these yet. Um, so we've got some armor here, adds a yellow dice to your defense and um, has a weight limit or sorry, a encumbrance of two to come off your weight limit. You've also got a nice set of dice, um, red being the best, with not many blanks, lots of ones, twos, and threes. Orange, I think, might have a three on, or is it just twos? I think it's ones and twos, and a few blanks. And then yellow with ones and twos and two or three blanks. So yellow, the worst dice, orange are pretty decent, and red are really, really good, and Conan rolls red. You may have noticed underneath this tray there are also some gems. The blue ones are for your heroes to activate their abilities. The red ones are mostly for the overlord, but you will also use red ones to mark your character sheet as to whether you're active or inactive. Now, because I've opened the box already, I've taken out these bases from um, this cardboard box because these are used with your unit cards. So let's have a look at those. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, this is a sheet uh, that you get in the base of the box. There's actually four of them in total. Most of them are unit cards, but it also includes a load of really nice chits. Very high quality. Now, the unit cards, you'll notice you've got skeletons with orange, skeletons with purple, skeletons with red, skeletons with blue, skeletons with green, and skeletons with no colour. And that refers to these bases here. Um, when you activate a unit, let's say you activate blue skeletons, all the skeletons in the scenario with blue bases become active. If you activate red skeletons, all the skeletons with red bases become active. And it's a nice little feature of the game. And this interacts with a plastic tray that I'll be showing you shortly. And you'll notice that the units have an ability, a movement rate, a built-in defense, and a built-in attack. And some of them have a reinforcement cost. 
they can die and if they die you flip them over to their bloodied sign and you know, as I say if it's a regular unit you can bring it back for a reinforcement cost whereas if it's a sort of a hero or a monster has no reinforcement cost you know when it's dead it's dead and as I say you get four of these um, four of these uh, die cut uh, punch boards and you'll notice on some of them for example we've got a mummies and a mummies yes some of these are in dual language so this is a French version and as such um, you won't need that if you're English speaking similarly if you're French you, you won't need the English speaking version so I recommend you keeping them around they're going to be useful for proxy and or if you accidentally damage your main plane piece there, there's nothing really on them that's his language dependent so that's pretty good uh, you get some tokens for various monsters for example um Thog, I believe he is. That's his marker for putting on the track for how much life he's got. Uh, these are random bits you might need to know about. Breaking through walls. Uh, there's a whole load of tokens, uh, including, for example, all this stuff. Some of which is used in the scenario, some of which isn't. Now, this big red and green and um, little kind of red arrow pointing um, tray will be used for stuff that's in this cardboard box up the top which you can just about see this box of goodies let's have a look inside this okay so in the nice big box of cardboard uh, depending on the version of the game you've got will depend on what your trays look like now this is the kickstarter pledge so the stuff across the top is definitely different potentially to your copy now we're all going to get conan our hero uh, let's just put this here because it uh, will show him up better. Now, there has been a little bit of a debate about the quality of um, the moulds on these lighter coloured figures. Now, I think that's not totally fair. I believe it's actually the diffusion of light on this figure makes them look a lot less detailed than the darker coloured miniatures. But, um, yeah, as we will see when we get to the lion, that some of the accusations of these not being as good are true. But Conan, he looks pretty good. I've seen him painted. Uh, he's quite a good figure. You've then got your rogue, your wizard, our uh, love interest. But some of these other figures are Kickstarter exclusives, like uh, this figure here. I believe this one's Kickstarter exclusive. This figure here, um, which is one of the properly clad female figures, so it's a shame she didn't come in the base set. Um, then you've got this um, woman here that comes with a wolf. She's, again, Kickstarter exclusive. I've got a feeling this might be an alternative Conan or uh, a baddie of some description. I'm not sure if he comes in the retail box. But basically, you're going to get a very similar set of figures, but not necessarily all of these. But what you will get is what's underneath. And that's this Overlord control panel. Now, the red and green panels go in here. And then the bit with the arrows goes in here and that tells you how many tokens to take out of this area and put them into your active area. You've got three little abilities you can activate for a unit and then you can activate two units a turn and it costs you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gems. And when you activate a unit, you actually take it out, put it all the way to the end of the river and slide everything down. So, for example, if you want to activate this unit, it costs you one gem, and this bit, which would previously have cost you two gems, slides down and now costs you one gem to activate. But bear in mind, you can only activate two units at a turn, uh, at a time in a turn, and when a unit dies, it gets flipped over and it clogs up your river. So you either have to activate it to do nothing, or you have to call in your reserves, which allows you to flip it back face up, or I believe it's you pay two gems just to totally remove it from your river. So that's a really nice little feature. Anyway, let's continue with the miniature uh, goodness. So I believe this is what you get in the retail copy. Uh, it is possible you might get a bit more zombies and skeletons. So let's start off with the weakest figures in the box, in my opinion, which are these um, sword-wielding pirates. They're, they're pretty decent, uh, but they're the weakest pose, in my opinion. You've then got um, some bowmen who are pretty nice, got some armour on them by the looks of it. You've got the... Rather nice spear wielding skeletons. Um, there are some alternative sculpt skeletons, I believe, in the Kickstarter box. You've also got uh, some mummies. They're pretty nice. But the, the best pieces and the pieces you play with in the first scenario are these Neanderthal looking 
Pictish warriors. Um, yes, they are training a little bit of the Native American. Um, I'm afraid that's an unfortunate side effect of the uh, source material where the Picts are a sort of mix between Native American and Celtic Irish tribes. Um, what's interesting is that these guys actually win in the end uh, against the civilised um, nations, but they slowly devolve. And I believe these are from the third era of the known world that Conan set in. Um, I believe you started off with, was it Cull or Kroll, uh, which then became the Hyborian Age, which is when Conan lives. And then in the final age, um, the Picts have devolved to this state. So they used to be a very civilised nation who was slowly falling from grace and um, being pushed out into the borderlands. Um, so, yeah, it's quite interesting to read the original material. But, um, yeah, these figures are really nice for board game pieces and they're going to paint up lovely. So that's a lot of stuff you're going to get in the box. Now, if you buy the retail box, I think it's about £80. Uh, the Kickstarter box, obviously, is a bit more pricey, particularly if you're buying it after the Kickstarter, Kickstarter like myself. I think it's about $150 um, on Kickstarter. You're going to pay more than that now. You're going to pay kind of north of £200 probably these days. But you do get a lot of stuff, because that is just the base set. I haven't even gone near the Kickstarter exclusive box. So what I'm going to do, I, I'm probably going to split this video into two and do a gameplay video and maybe have a look at the Kickstarter exclusive. But before I do that, let's have a look at the one bit you haven't seen yet, which are the play-in boards that are stuck right at the bottom of the box. Okay, so this is the Pictus village with a nice close-up of a crow flying over head. And as you can see, it's a pretty big board um, with lots of really, really nice detail. So if we zoom in on, where is the one with lots of, yes, it was over here, I think. So if we zoom in, for example, over here, you'll see like there's, you know, a skull, a bed, um, some skins hanging on the wall. And if you look closely, there are flaps that let you come into the buildings and this is a stone hut with all sorts of nice bits and pieces and the boards divided up into zones so for example Conan could start here and move into this zone and then come through this hut wall here and slaughter a load of people in here and then burst through the wall into this area here and then through into this hut and then decide to have a bit of a rest because he's a bit tired. Um, so a great piece of artwork. Um, just lovely little details when you look closely, uh, it's fabulous. Now the boards are actually split into two sides. So on the opposite side of here, there is, is it a tavern or a fortress? Let's have a quick look. Yes, this is the, the, the tavern on this side. So yeah, you've got two boards. Each board has, um, as I say, double sides. The other side is a keep and some pirate ships. And they all have this very high quality artwork. And so it's beautiful to play on. Now there is a role-playing crossover kit to play with sort of tiled um, areas and includes a little adventure book to expand uh, what you get in the game. Because one of the problems with the retail game is you've only got the four boards to play on effectively. And I want to say eight scenarios. With the Kickstarter, I believe you get a bonus four or possibly eight scenarios for 12 to 16 in total. So some people have said that's a little bit limited, but you know, I've played this scenario and it lasted, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half, and I was happy to potentially just set it up and play it again. Um, so there is lots of potential um, in just what you get in the box. Now, would it have been better with more? Well, yes, it would have been. But, you know, you've got all those lovely miniatures. You've got a load of really nice counters. You've got this beautiful box of bits. And I haven't even looked at the giant snake yet. So let's do that next. Well, before we look at the snake, let's just talk about the lion. He is a Kickstarter freebie, so you won't be getting this figure in the retail box. But it's no great loss, because, to be honest, it's not that great a sculpt. The details are a little bit soft. The mane and the face in particular could be better. The body, actually, when you paint it up, is not so bad. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's a shame you're not getting it in the retail box, but 
it's not a great loss to be honest. What is a bit more um, disturbing is I don't think you get this guy in the retail box and he's lovely. Look at the detail on him. But the best piece in the box is probably this giant snake. Now, if you're going to paint him, uh, there are some joins with some rather unfortunate gaps that you might need to green stuff before you paint him. But it's pretty trivial to take care of that. And then when you paint this up, it's going to look magnificent. The, the detail on this figure is fabulous. I mean, just look at that texture. So it's great. Now, I'm not sure if it's sharp in the camera, but he's got his little tongue and some ridges in the back of his throat and little sharp pointy teeth, a little death ra skull rattle and lovely scaly texture. Really, really nice piece. And I know a lot of people would happily, if they're war gamers, pay, oh, I don't know, 10, 20 pounds just for this one figure. So from that point of view, you're getting some really great miniatures. And that's not including all the stuff that was in this box here. So great figure just in this one piece. And as I say, a little bit of green stuff, paint it up. It's going to look fabulous. And all these figures painted look way better than they do just as, as raw plastic. But uh, I must admit, when it comes to war gaming, I, I'm an absolute fanatic for playing with painted pieces. But when it comes to board gaming, I, I often sort of, yeah, it's just a piece I'm moving around. But these are nice enough I might actually have to seriously give consideration to painting them. So great stuff. Now, I was talking a bit about how I felt about the game. And if you haven't kind of gathered, I, I am a little bit of a fanboy. Um, I mean, just that box cover. I mean, it's just so epic. Uh, there's Conan with a necromancer or a shaman coming for him. And he's surrounded by a load of mooks. Um, load of undead skeletons and you just know he's going to kick all of their butts and the game gives you that feeling that it allows you to be Conan and just kick people's butts fantastic fantastic game I really like it is it worth 80 pounds well if the kickstarter version which I've just shown you was 80 pounds I'd say yes the retail version a little bit trickier probably Yes, but they need to release some PDF scenarios pretty quickly um, because four maps with eight scenarios straight out of the box just seems a little bit stingy. Um, it's not terrible. That's a choice you're going to have to make. Also, can you get your head around the potential racism and sexism based on some of the stuff in the source material? If you really don't like, you know, the bare-chested cone and the bare-chested ladies then this might not be the best game for you um, as I say what I find particularly annoying is there is actually a strong female character in the kickstarter box which isn't in the retail box and that was a bit of a misstep I think um, the king pledge box that you're looking at here that should be the retail box um, for kickstarter they should have given you this extra box over here which as I say we'll probably look at in another video so I'm going to have to go away and just double check the rules, make sure I don't misplay too many of them. Uh, while you're waiting for me to do that, you might want to check out the Shut Up and Sit Down video and the Barry Doublet video about Conan, which uh, will give you alternative views on this game. And, and by taking my video and those uh, two videos into account, you have three different opinions and you'll be able to make your own decision as to whether or not you should crush your enemies and hear the lamentation of their women.